Hi, thank you so much for purchasing this tutorial. In this series of videos, I'm going to take you through the whole process to create this pendant from making the tree of life on the stone, creating the frame, adding components, adding accents, creating the bale, and also in the end I have a tutorial on oxidizing and polishing your pieces. So it is very complete, it is very long, but it's in different sections. So you can do one section, then stop, and then when you go back to the tutorial, you can go directly where you stopped and go with the next section of the tutorial. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's do it. So to start with this tutorial, we want to create a tree of life on a round cabochon. So in this example, I am using these two and a half um, centimeters round Labradorite cabochon. And on it, I have created a tree of life using 26 gauge round wire and 20 gauge square wire for the base. So I, al I already have a tutorial showing the process of making this tree of life. So that will be the first part of this tutorial. And then from there, we're going to continue making, well, the rest of the pendant for this tutorial. Okay, now we have our tree of life on our round cabochon. So we're going to start creating the frame of the pendant. So what we want to do is to take a piece of wire. So this wire here is 18 gauge square wire, uh, dead soft. You can use half hard as well. I'm using this one because right now I don't have half hard. So what we want is to calculate that we will have enough wire to do the frame and then with the wires come back a little, like the frame goes here, then it creates the bale and then the wires come down. So for that This amount of wire should be enough. So, how much do we have here? This is 28 centimeters, 11 inches. So we want to straighten our wire. We can use our fingers for that. And find the center, the middle of the wire. I like to balance it like this. And once it stays in balance, then you have found the middle of the wire. So, <clears throat> I'm going to be using this mandrel here to create a nice little bend. For the bottom of my frame. Mm. maybe a bit more open okay good and now I like to keep my uh, frames a bit symmetrical so I want to find something round like I use the mandrel but a bit wider to create the, the bend that will go around the stone okay I have found this so this is just some polishing past, but it has 
the size I need for the task. So here I place the wire against it and I just bend the wire around the the jig. <laughs> Okay, so this is looking good. We will need to make a few adjustments, but this is this is what we want. So once we have it more or less to the shape we want so we want to leave a bit of space in between the frame and the cabochon as you can see here here on the sides that's what we want but we want our frame to be as symmetrical as possible and sometimes one side is bigger than the other so for that um, we can use a piece of paper, a uh, square paper, to, to see the distance from the middle to one side. Or if you have one, you can use this kind of board here that can help us see our symmetry. So what we want to do is to place it right in the middle here and then the upper side in the middle line where the wires cross and then see if one side is going um, more away from the center than the other so for example here everything is centered and where the wires cross is in the middle and the sides are to the same distance so we can use um, one tool for example here I have this and I will just mark my wires to have a reference and from here I know where to where to bend my wires straight up and the other side like this okay this is looking good so now what we want is to secure our two wires here. So for this I will be using this wire here. So this is 20 gauge half round wire and I just need a little piece like this one. So we place the wire in the middle, more or less, like this. And then we wrap two times, one, two. And then with one side, we secure it to the to the frame let's say inside and we do the same with the other side should look like this now we can cut the excess wire oops
And there we go. Now, what we want is to secure this cabochon to the frame, and this will make all the frame uh, more rigid. Okay, so here I have some square wire. This is 20 gauge square wire, and I will use it to secure the tree to the frame. So, for this, I want to calculate um, the length of wire I want to use so I want the wire to go through um, the stone and uh, and the base wire here in the um, in the tree of life cabochon and to be able to secure it to the frame so more or less I want this amount of wire this is a bit too much but it's easier to work with So here I want to cut one side like this to create a point so that it will be easier for it to go through in between the stone and the wire here. Then I want to use a tool with a pointy end like this one to create a gap, a space in between the wire and the stone. If you're using a Labradorite, be careful because these stones are fragile and you can break them easily. So be mindful of that. And as you can see, you can put the wire in between. and we want the pointy end to be able to slide inside easily there we go So now that we have our frame and the tree of life ready to be secured to the frame, we will place the um, tree of life on top of the frame, like this. Or maybe we opened this before. <laughs> like this. So we will secure all the wires here to the frame. So we can start with the top to to sec to secure the height of the pen the of the tree of life on the frame. So now our wires here are a bit long. We will make them shorter and we are ready to secure here so we don't want to um, make it too tight just like this we want the wires to to be able to move a little to adjust properly the um, like the symmetry and the height of the wires and once everything is in the right place we can tighten the wires A 
or less like this so once we we have them where we want we can apply some more pressure so that it doesn't move anymore and finish wrapping the wires here like so now we can cut the excess close to the frame and there we have it so now we will secure these other wires here one side and the other side So it's better to have it symmetrical. So for that, again, we can check if we have a board like this one. We place it in the middle and then maybe we can move it so that we have a reference with a line. And as you can see here, it's in the center and up here it's in the center too so we want our wires to follow one of the parallel lines like this so here everything is centered so we're good now we can cut the excess of wire close to the frame apply some more pressure so that nothing moves and now the tree can move a little bit from side to side but that's okay so now we can add some more um, wires here below to create a base for the second stone we're going to use So for that, we're going to use uh, some more 20 gauge square wire, two pieces. So we win the length of the wires, um, we just need enough to, to be able to secure it. So this should be enough. And this one we want to place it under. Why under? Because then it will be easier for the stone to sit here and there will be this uh, wire from the frame that will lock it into place.
sorry it doesn't want to stay where where I want so this one we want to place it um, close to the stone here and then we go for the other side Again, we want to make this symmetrical, so be careful to, to always keep the horizontal line good. Okay, this looks good. We can cut the excess. And we will add one more wire here the same way as the one we just did so it should look like this and now we have a nice base here for our stone to sit on so here I have a little amethyst this one is 10 millimeters or a bit less than half an inch and we want it to sit right here and as you can see this wire here prevents it from falling down so that's where we want it to be and the two wires allows, allow it to sit properly so that it cannot fall from any of the gaps below now that everything is set up into place we will start adding components so what we want to do here is to add two double coils, one on each side of the pendant going from this wire here to this one over here so for that I have here some half round wire um, this is 20 gauge half round that's soft and is 30 centimeters or about 12 inches and I have also some 30 gauge um, weaving wire and this is about 1 meter or 40 inches so if you don't know how to make double coils um, know that the wires that I use is for the double coils I like to make but you can use whatever wires you want your favorite wires to make your double coils so for that here I start securing wrapping or maybe coiling <laughs> the wire the weaving wire around the half round and then I will continue the same process um, all the way until I finish the weaving wire so I'll come back to you when that's done so now my wires are ready 
So my first coil is done and now I want to wrap this coil or coil this coil around some more wire. So now I have a piece of 20 gauge square again long enough to be able to secure it on one side and the other. I always take more wire than I need um, so that I don't run out of wire. So now this is the same process. I secure the wire to the base wire and then I will continue coiling until I come to the end of the um, first coil here. But when I do this I have to check, right? Because I only need the, do the double coil to go from here to here. So as you make your double coil measure the distance and when you are ready um, you just stop making the double coil. I will show you. Alright? So, yeah, let's do it here. I use a drill to do this. It's faster and it looks better, in my opinion. So, let's do it. Perfect. So here I have just what I need and if I made it too big I can just uncoil a bit of the borders here where the half wire is half round wire is naked so this is enough here and here too This is what we want. And now we have one more wire missing that will be in between the lines here. So for that I will be using some 28 gauge um, weaving wire and we don't need to cut it. We just take it from the spool. So here I leave an extra wire here, length of wire, and I start coiling around the double coil this way. And now I can just turn spin the double coil like this placing our weaving wire where we want to and then when we come to the end of the double coil we continue coiling like maybe two or three times so that the weaving wire is uh, properly secured now we can just move the wire around like this and it will snap where it has to. This is a magical technique. And the same for the other side. And we wanted to leave this to be able to do this. 
Okay, so now that we have our first double coil ready to be secured here, we will make a second one. So here I started making the second double coil and on this one I took a bit too much weaving wire. So how do we adjust uh, that when we have too much? So I want to take all this wire here um, that is it's an excess so what I do is I uncoil a bit of that wire here like this and if the wire is longer you can just like pull on it this way and it will uncoil very easily I have still too much so I will uncoil one rotation and take this little wire off and now we're good so here I just have to pull on the wire like this it will snap where it has to and then I secure the half round wire again and here I will uncoil also the same as the other one just I want two rotations of the naked half round wire and now we are ready for the 28 gauge to go around the coilet coil okay our two double coils are ready I will just cut the excess wire like this and now we will secure them to the frame so I want to give a little bend into the double coil so that it fits perfectly into place you can just push it around the stone like this like so so we're going to start with the upper side so I want to give um, a bend here bend the wire down 90 degrees this way it will be easier to place it against the wire where we are going to secure it and then and then we secure it
Okay. Like this. So we cut the excess. And now we can do the same here below. So if you happen to have a double coil that is bigger than you want it, for example here, my double coil ends a bit more like far away from this wire that I wanted to use to secure it. So no problem. I just have to bend the wire down the same as the one before and instead of securing it to this wire we're going to secure it to the frame here on the side like this It's always like this with wire wrapping. Sometimes you plan something and it just doesn't come as you want it. So you have to figure out a way to, to fit or just, you know, flow with it. So there we go and we cut the excess. So this is what we want and now the same with the other side. So this is what we want to get. Now we're going to add a weave in the um, on the sides here and here so for that we need some 22 gauge or 21 gauge as you want and we're going to take three wires for each side three pieces of wire of course and some weaving wire so for this you can use 28 gauge or 30 gauge the one you like the most for me personally I like to use 30 gauge because I think it looks nicer so here I have taken like about 80 centimeters so about 31 inches and we will make a very simple weave here so we grab our three wires Ah, this is square wire, by the way. I secure my coiling wire seven times. Around the bottom wire. The bottom base wire. This one. And then the pattern is very simple two times around all the wires and then seven on the 
the wire that we have um, closer to us. So seven and two around all the wires and seven again. Okay, you get the idea. And now we will need to go from here to here. All right. From here to here with the pattern. Okay. So our weave is ready now, so it goes from up there to down here, exactly what we wanted. So we take the excess of weaving wire, as you can see I have about maybe 30 centimeters too much. So you can be careful about that when you do the second side and take a bit less wire. And now we want to shape our weave. Okay, like this. So what I like doing to save some space here is that I bend the base wires here 90 degrees down and then I cut two of them. So in this case I will cut the wires that are on the outer side of the weave about one millimeter from where I bent it 90 degrees. Like this. Okay. And this side. I will pre-shape it down also so that I can place it inside the frame easily. So that what I will do now is that I will take the wire that I have left on the weave and use it to secure the weave to the frame. And we cut the excess here. So this is what we want here. And as you can see, the wires that we just took off here are sitting flat against the frame wire. So it doesn't bother. They are not missed. If they are not in the correct position, you can push them a little. Just be careful not to leave any marks. But it works perfectly like this. And now what we can do is 
actually the same for the other side that's that depends of you you can secure the three wires if you have enough space but if you don't just secure one of them and that will be enough so here I bend the weave 90 degrees again I cut it more or less one millimeter from the 90 degrees angle and I keep one wire and with that wire we secure like this and now we repeat the same process for the other side okay so now we have our two sides ready and secured and now comes the funny part so we will try to secure, I mean, we will secure um, the amethyst here. So for our next step, we will secure um, the amethyst with our next component. So here I have three pieces of 20 gauge uh, round, round wire. So these are about 14 centimeters or five inches and a half and we will take also a piece of half round wire um, this is about the same length so what we want to do here is find the center of the wires and take start from one side so the middle is here and we will take about one centimeter to the left we will leave um, some extra wire here maybe a little more even yeah like this and start wrapping the wires together since these are round wires they tend to not to stay flat one against the other but they tend to um, do this <laughs> so we want to flatten them a little and we will wrap the half round wire about um, what we have here seven eight nine ten times like this and now we will separate one of the wires we can even pre-shape here the curve we're going to use and separate the wire that is in the middle of the curve in the inside side of the curve so for this to keep it flat we can use some nylon tip 
pliers these are parallel ones if you have the regular ones it works too if you have flat nose pliers it works as well and now we want to wrap a few times the half round wire around this little wire we just separate from the others three times and the other side try to keep your half round wire <clears throat> um, like not twisting always on the good side and we're going to leave the excess wire like this so now we can continue giving shape to our component so we want it to be a bit smaller than the stone to be able to cover it and secure it into place for that you can use this kind of plier these are bale uh, forming pliers sorry like this so the wire, the stone I mean, cannot go through, has to be a little more, a little smaller. What we want to do now is to bend the two wires that are in the middle, these ones here we want to bend them down no need to make um, hard bends just with the fingers it's okay and we will place the stone into place and place the wires on each side of the stone so like this this part can be a little tricky if the place for your stone um, is not very big but you want to make sure all your wires are like in a good position to be able to go inside so now we want to place our component in the correct position just to try so we have to find the gaps to put it into place and now we just push like so now we 
will show you from behind how it looks like and this is just to try just to see if the component is fitting good around the stone and we can bend a little the round wire like this and now with the other wires here we want to create like a like a swirl like a circle so this is what we are going to do we need to see where we're going to make that uh, kind of spiral and and choose that place so for me it will be around here I want it to cover where I attached my wires here so I want to cover that with my spiral so for that we will take some round nose pliers and take one of the wires here and now we will create this spiral now we have all these wires that aren't allowing us to do the spiral so we can bend the wire down like so and we can continue making the spiral this is what we want to make and now shape the second wire around it for that you can use your flat nose pliers to secure both wires to give the shape be gentle on the pliers you don't want to leave marks in the on the wire So this is the shape we want to make. And the same on the other side. So this is the shape we want to have. All right. And now we have to place it in position. So this might take a few tries because sometimes you need to make a few adjustments. It doesn't come as easily. So put your stone in position for me the space is a little bit short but that's alright and now try to place all your wires in a good position to be able to slide it into place sometimes it's good also to cut all the wires to the same length this way um, it will help you <laughs> So 
So as I told you, this can take a few tries and the stone will be will probably be moving around so you will have to place it again and maybe take your component out of position and try again Okay, see? So, this is what we want. The stone is still moving around. Maybe I have to make a few adjustments. But this is the idea of what we want. So once all the wires are in position, you can start securing them to the frame so to help you to secure this component here you want to bend the half round wires like this to the sides this will help um, having the, the component not moving around. And these ones will be secured to the frame here on the sides. <clears throat> so. I want to take one of the wires here and secure it to that frame. One time on each side. Okay, good. Okay, so our half round wires have been secured here to the frame and now we will take these two wires here. These are the ones that are inside against the stone. So we want to place them as good as we can against the stone, a bit on top of the stone actually to be able to to secure the stone properly once the wires are in position we will secure them to one of the horizontal wires that are behind the stone one side the space can be a little small so be careful when you're securing this wire because it will pull uh, here on top and sometimes it can give a shape that we don't want So look the front from time to time and then do the other side. So both sides are secured now. This and this wire and also the half rounds and now we only have to secure these four wires 
on the sides, which are the spirals that we have here. But we, before doing that, we're going to cut the other wires so that they don't, they are not in the way. So we're going to wrap one more time the half round wire against around the um, the frame the other side and the round wires here as well. So for this I only want to cut maybe one millimeter. This little one here. And then push it inside like this. And the same for the other side. Okay, so we have these four wires left, so we're going to be securing them here on the side, right here, under the spiral. So for that we're going to take our first wire, this one. and wrap it around the frame very gently don't pull on it too strong you don't want to give a weird shape to your spiral so be careful how you pull on it and then the second one I like to put a finger on the spiral and apply some pressure down so that nothing moves out of place. Like this. and then pull a little more and there we are now the same for the other side now that our wires here are secured since we made only one full rotation it's better to always do at least two full rotations so we are a bit short on space here but we can still do it so same process we take the wire that is on the lower side 
and we give it one more rotation like so and the same on the other side in this part we're going to be adding some uh, accents to the um, to the pendant so this is the finished pendant as you may noticed um, that's because I lost the footage when I was recording this actually I didn't record it uh, but I'm going to show you how I did it instead of recording the the whole build of the piece again so the accents here are this these two parts here, this little um, loop and this one here, which are made in brass so so here I have some 16 gauge half round brass wire, this is dead soft make sure to have dead soft if you use uh, brass or copper because half hard uh, sometimes this can be very difficult to bend properly if you're using brass at least so we want to have a distance like this for for our little accent I'm not giving measures because you only have to to think about how much you will need to secure it and how much you will need to make the loop so something like this compared to your pendant is maybe two times the the length of the pendant will be enough so if you have um, nylon tip pliers I recommend using them if you don't just use your regular flat nose pliers I use the nylon ones because they don't leave marks on the on the wire so grab the wire like this leave a certain amount of wire available and bend the wire like this with your finger and applying some pressure from time to time like this with your plier so that the half round plier um, the half round wire stays you know flat with the half round side um, on one side and and the flat side on the other and keep bending at some point you will need to use both hands so pull on it use the plier to make everything flat again and continue bending the wire and so on until you have the size you want so from time to time you want to be checking on your on your pendant um, the, the spot you want to cover with the loop right so maybe you want it bigger or smaller that's up to you for me I'm going to make it a little smaller like this right so then what you want to do is to take this side of the wire and take it 
back a little bit something like this um, for it to be easier to secure to the pendant so now that you have it good you just need to bend it down so you secure the, the loop with your plier and with your finger you make a 90 degrees angle for the wire to go down from there you place it in a gap of your pendant like this one for example here and then you start bending the wire to cover the places you want to, to be covering so for me I want it to be in between the stone and the double coil here to cover that small gap we have in between so it will look like tighter and and with a better kind of build so you do that and then I will show you the other side once you have the correct curve you want to be bending this side here 90 degrees down as well in the place where where you're going to to secure it so like a piece of the frame in my case it's coming here right where where the base wire of the tree of life we build splits and connects to the frame you can see here right here so once you have placed your wire I'll do the bend I I'll try to show you so this is what I mean with the bend 90 degrees bend you place it in position like so you push it inside so now I have the the bail here but no worries about that and then you will bend your wires to go where you want to secure them so in my case I cannot secure it right away I have to take my wire a little bit up here because here I have some available frame so you just bend your wire up like so and then to one side like this and then you secure it to the frame like like I did here with with the real accent I secured the the process is the same as for all the other components and here up is the same I bend my wire down and then to the side like this to go to a place where I have some available frame to secure the wire so I'm going to to take this away and as you can see the wire comes from here and it's secured here and the same down here and when you're done guess what you repeat the process for the other side <laughs> as usual so this is the process that I followed to create these golden accents I think they look very cool um, with the copper wire so now that we're done with this we will go um, to create the bale which is the, the the process that I used to build it actually not like this that I'm just showing you how I did it 
but the actual process of making it. Now we are ready to make the bale. So for the bale we will take some flat nose pliers. I like these ones because you can get the same distance on both sides when you create this shape. So just use the width of the, of the plier to do this and we want to get this shape here like this because we're going the the component we're going to attach will be here in the middle secured to both sides here so if you already have watched a tutorial from me maybe you have learned already how to make this because this is my signature bail but if you haven't then just continue watching the video so here I am cutting four pieces of 22 gauge square brass wire you want them to be more or less uh, the same length as the wires you have here maybe a little more to be comfortable working with them but yeah there's no need to have like an exact measure so you want to straighten your wires to do this okay and now we're going to take some weaving wire so the one I am using here is um, 30 gauge brass wire and we're going to take about 60 centimeters 70 centimeters which is about uh, 60 centimeters is um, 24 inches and we take our wires here and first we secure our weaving wire to the first uh, base wire here so for um, full rotations and then we hold it here we take two wires on one side and two wires in the other we just want to have like a space here in the middle and so we go on top of two wires and below the two next wires then we make one full rotation around uh, the base wire that is like more far away from us and then when we come back we go on top of two and under two wires like this one full rotation around our first um, base wire and then again on top of two under two one full rotation on the last base wire on top of two under two one full rotation and so on so we want to do this for about at least maybe Two centimeters all right two centimeters is like three quarters of an inch so I will do that and we continue 
when we're there. Okay, so here we have our weave. Should look like this. And this, when the component is ready, will be secured right here, like this. Two wires secured on one side and the other two on the other side. So now what we want to do is to give a little shape to our base wires here. because this component, once it's bent as a bale, will come like this on the pendant. So we want our wires to come like this here. So it's better to pre-shape our wires and and presenting the um, component on the on the piece on the pendant to check uh, if the shape is good, right? For example, here. This looks pretty good to me. So the following weave we're going to do. If you have enough wire here, you can use this. If you don't have enough, um, I'll show you on the other side how to add one more wire. So we want to have four full rotation rotations around our first wire here like this and then one full rotation around the second wire and the next rotation will go on top of the second wire and under the first one and then one full rotation around the first wire and the second one goes in the middle of both wires and then one full rotation around the second wire. So it's a very easy weave, very simple. And the idea is to continue this until you get to, to make whatever you need here. So for example, here in my case, this will go like this here. And I need my weave to go from here, right, where it starts until here. So I need to make all this here with the weave. So this is the pattern. See you when this is ready. So here we have our component. Here's the weave and to finish we just wrap four full rotations um, of the weaving wire around the base, one of the base wires here. And this is what we get. 
So now we take another piece of wire for the other side. So you can take about maybe 40 centimeters. Um, that would be um, 16 inches. And we do the following. We take our weaving wire here and we place it in between the two base wires. Actually, it will be easier if we take it our way um, closer to us. So we put it in between like this. And we do four full rotations around the first wire, first wire, second wire here. And then we repeat exactly the same process, same weave. And try to be careful to, to make it look like the other side. So from time to time, just look at it, see if the wires have the same distance here in the middle as the other one, just for it to, to look nice and, and symmetrical. And, well, we do this weave until we have the same distance from here to here as this side. So we have our component almost ready now. We just need to cut this wire from the weave we just made here. As you can see, there is the, the beginning of the wire. So we just take it off with our favorite cutting technique. There we go. And the same with the first beginning of the wire here. Perfect. So now we want to separate the wires here and place them behind our pendant, like so. Maybe we open this a little more. Yes, like this. So, we can separate even the wires from each other like this here, so that it's easier to grab them. So we want to take here one of the wires that are next um, to the pendant and wrap it around, secure it to that frame wire. And just the same way as before, do not um, do not tight it, tighten it too much. We want it to be able to move and to be able to adjust it, and do the same with the other with the other side. So we want it. We want to place the um, the component here in the middle. So now that both wires are into place, we can start adjusting. And when we are ready, we can finish finish securing that wire, those wires.
So now on the front side we can place our wire like this here this one and just cut it about one centimeter from the base or frame wire because we want to be able to bend it to the inside afterwards so we cut it there and then we bend it inside like this and the same for the other side there we go And for the other two wires here, we just want to, this is the front of the pendant, we want just to bend it to the inside next to the other wires here and just cut the same way, one centimeter from, uh, one millimeter from the, from the frame wire and then just bend it inside like this and the same for the other side here we cut oh, this one is a bit long we cut and we bend inside like this okay good now we want to bend the base the frame wire here to follow the curve here of our component so for that we just use our fingers go slowly doesn't need to be to be perfect yet and the other side as you can see I'm holding the wire here with this finger and then pushing gently with my thumb there all right Now I want to flatten a little bit everything here so that, you know, it's flat. <laughs> and then we take the bale forming pliers. I'll use the thinnest um, part of the plier, but you can use a pencil um, or some regular round nose pliers whatever whatever you have so we will push the new component here to the front like on top of the pendant with my thumb here And as we go, we can also turn the plier this way to adjust the height 
of the component here. So, for example, as you can see here, if I turn my player here, all the component we go will go a bit um, more up, but I can also turn into the other side and have it come a little more down, more on top of the tree here. So we want to check where it looks the best and once we're happy with it we can leave it there. Like this. Now we place our plier in the same place as before and we will bend the frame wires. So we bend it like this and then we adjust the curve of the wire to fit perfectly where we want. Like this. And of course the same on the other side. <laughs> it's more difficult to record this um, showing you. So I'll just do it the way I do it usually, which is like this. I like to use my thumb to push the wire like in the little spots like this one there we go all right so once everything is formed and into place we want to secure our wires the the ones from the last component so for that we take our pliers here these are needle nose pliers um, and you just take one wire you bend it around the border of the pendant and you secure it to the frame so what I like doing here is that I will secure it to the um, to the inside if that makes sense so for me the inside will be the inside of this component so instead of securing it um, like that way I will secure it this way. So one full rotation here. should look something like this and we secure it here right one full rotation we can leave the, the wire there for now and go for the second wire all right the second one and we go one full rotation to this side this time so that both wires are secured um, like next to each other
like this. So now we just cut the excess as close to the frame as possible. And there we go. Right here. And same for the other side. Now both sides are secured, as you can see here. And now we want to secure our frame wires that will create a clean line on the sides of the bell, the bale. So the same way with our fingers or maybe with a plier, just bend it around the side of the pendant and we want to secure it around the frame wire. So this is maybe a bit long. I will make it shorter and then just the same way. This one I want to secure it this way. And I am careful with directions because for example, this part of the component here and the frame wire here, I want them to go next to each other. So if I secure uh, the wire from the um, component that way, then the next wire that I will secure will have like a space, right? Because it cannot go next to it. So this is why the wire here from the component is secured this way and the frame wire I want to secure it this way so that they go both one next to the other. I will show you. So we do one rotation like this here, so only one loop and then we can cut the same as before leaving a little distance and we bend it inside so this is the wire here See what I mean here? We can adjust a little bit, apply some pressure and it should look like this here. And we do the same for the other side. Now both sides are ready. So our pendant is ready. Now we only have to oxidize and polish um, the pendant, but all the wire wrapping part of it is ready. So the next video will be about oxidizing and polishing. It's another pendant that I'm oxidizing and polishing in the video, but it shows you the whole process and the video is very complete.
Okay, this is the end of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned new techniques, new tricks uh, to upgrade your skills on wire wrapping. Um, these are one of my favorite kind of uh, pieces because they are nice to do. I love the shine on the labradorites behind the, um, behind the tree. And also these are one of the best gifts that I have. So when I have to make a gift, I like to make one of these, like a labradorite and a tree of life on it. And then, you know, sometimes change a bit the design. But I love the symmetry, how it looks. And also people are very sensitive to this. So this is one of my best seller kind of jewelry. So I really encourage you to try that out if you're making jewelry to sell or if it's just to make gifts to your friends and your family. So thank you so much, thank you so much, and uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.